In this tutorial I'm going to talk about how you can add a watermark to your video inside Final Cut Pro 10. Um, so I'm going to do this the easiest way basically, which is um, I've got my logo that I want to add. Uh, I'm going to click and drag onto my timeline and you can see now the logo is on top of the video. Now important note here is that this um, logo is a PNG with a transparent background. So I don't have to worry about trying to, um, you know, make it transparent, it already is. So I'd recommend if you're going to try this, try and get hold of a logo that is already transparent. If you don't have one, I'll show you a couple of ways around it, but for now, that's the best option. So I've got my clip, I'm going to click and drag all the way across my project. So you can see now I have that there. Uh, it's not quite a watermark yet because A, it's completely solid and B, it's smack bang in the middle of the clip, which might be what you want. Uh, it's not what I'm after at the moment. So I'm going to click on my clip and I'm going to come up to the compositing view here and I'm going to scale the opacity down to the point where it's transparent. So this level of uh, watermark might be good if you're trying to send a preview to a client and you definitely don't want them to use the footage um, but for my case it's a bit intrusive all I want is my logo sort of in the top left hand corner so if we did want to do that we can uh, come down here select the transform tool and then we're going to move that logo up and then I'm going to scale it scale it and move it until it's roughly where I want it and at the size I want so there you go. Um, I can even add a, uh, a sort of fade in, fade out. That was Command T I did there. It adds the default transition to the clip. So you can now see at the start, my logo fades in and uh, at the end, it fades out. So that's cool. That's a uh, simple way of doing it. Um, so now what happens if you don't have a transparent logo? So I'm going to bring on this version of my logo, stretch it across, and you can see oof, now I have completely blocked my screen. If I bring down the opacity, I mean, yeah, I can see the video, but you've still got this sort of awkward looking white box. So the way to fix this is using the blend modes. So there are lots of different blend modes. I'm not going to go into them all now. But I'll just show you two different ones that might help depending on what your logo is. So um, my logo, as you can see, is sort of uh, black text on a white background. So if I want to make the white background transparent, I'm going to select multiply. So you can see now that my logo, um, the white background's gone and I'm just left with the black text. Uh, you can see that the um, the greyness of my icon has um, sort of disappeared. That's just down to the way that Multiply works. Um, it's really better for black and white images. Um, if you wanted to do the other way around, you would use screen. So you can see now the black areas of my image have gone transparent and the white is still there. And you can see for that gray, um, that is sort of semi-transparent. Um, but, you know, depending on your logo, you might want to have a play around with some of these, just try some of the different modes. Um, you know, there's lots of them. Um, you can look up exactly how they all work. Um, basically, they're all just different mathematical operations that are being performed. So, um, you know, there's a way they work. Oh, that looks cool. Um, And uh, yeah, so have a look. Um, Photoshop has most of these blend modes. Like these blend modes are fairly standard across um, across lots of different tools. So you should be able to learn about them. Uh, but generally, always easier to start with an image that's already transparent.